This workflow describes how to set up a project in Leica Icon Build software. It will also cover the import of both design and control data. I've already switched my tablet on and it has automatically started up in the Icon Build software package. I'm going to exit out of the package by selecting the power button at the top right and selecting exit. Data is regularly supplied on a USB drive. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial I've created a folder called USB drive on my desktop but generally speaking you will find your USB drive under computer and it'll be here. Okay so let's have a look at the data that my surveyor has provided me. Okay, So this is quite typical he's provided me with a two XML files and one CSV for the control it's recommended to use XML files over other typical file types such as DXF as XML is a bit more intelligent and can contain some more relevant data. Um, at this stage it looks as though I've been provided with a lines file and a triangular model file. Lines file is called CL. The uh, model is finished surface. I've also been provided with a control file which is dated a few days ago. Common practice would be to rename these files to better illustrate which project they belong with. So I'm just going to edit the names now to show that they are associated with the project demo. This will mean that the next time a surveyor provides me with data which is again called centerline, finish surface and control, I will be able to better differentiate between which job is which. Okay, so I've just edited all of these files and given them the prefix of demo, and now I'm just going to copy them. For the icon build software to read these files, they need to be in a particular directory, and this directory is as follows. Open up your documents and then select Leica Geosystems. From here we can enter into the icon folder and then under the heading of data. Okay, so just going to paste these three files in here. Now that our data is ready to be imported, we're going to re execute the icon software. Okay, the icon software is now started up. We can see that the project and job have been set to default. I'm just going to select projects from the data menu. I'm going to select the green plus at the bottom of the screen. Once I start my new project, I'm prompted for a name. And I've also got the option of entering a description. I'm going to leave that blank at this stage. There's a drop down box here that says units. We can see here the units that are going to be used on this project. These will default to the last units used. I've also got a drop down box for geometric scale factor. Now it's critical that this is set correctly. This geometric scale factor can be found in the control schedule or it can be found just by asking your surveyor and he'll let you know the correct way to set it. Next option on the left is import data. So what we want to do is we want to import both reference and control data to this job. I'm going to import the reference data first, so I'm just going to select that at the top of the screen. The source is going to be from internal memory. The data source is going to be from the data folder. Okay, you can see here that we've got our demo centerline demo finished surface. Now that's the two items that I want to use as reference data so I'm going to select the green tick at the bottom right hand of screen. Then I'm going to select control and here I'm going to select the comma separated file which is demo control. We're now prompted to select the column order. Okay. Now, generally speaking in Australia, we use easting then normaling. So the correct way to enter this would be ID followed by easting, 
then northing, then height, and finally code. The field separator here that is being used is comma, which is here. And we can see in our import preview here, we can see that the point ID is being separated from the easting, which is then separated from the northing. We then see our height, and the code here is STN, or station, which makes sense. Distance unit is set to meters, and we're not skipping any rows. If there was a header at the top of our text file, it would display point, east, north, height, code here. And we could skip that header by selecting row count of 1. However, I don't have a header in this case, so I'm going to leave it at 0. I'll just select the green tick. Now that we've selected all the data that we want to import, I'm just going to select the green tick one last time. Depending on the size of the job, this can take some time. I've just been prompted with the dialog box. The import was successful of the first file that we imported 37 lines and one surface. Second file, which was our control file, we can see that we've imported three control points. Okay. To view this data and just check that it's all correct, I'm just going to open up the measure application, which will start us off in a map screen. We can see here at this stage, if I zoom in, we've got a road coming around a sweeping bend and we've got three control points along the alignment. We can see that we've imported quite a few points along the centre line of the road. We've also imported left and right hand points at various changes. If you don't want to display all of the data, or if you want to filter your screen, can easily be done with the Layers Windows option at the bottom right hand of the screen. Now I'm going to drop, drop down the menu which came in with our Lines file. I'm just going to turn off Show Points and select the tick. Now my data looks a bit cleaner. I can see clearly which control points are. I can see that I have an alignment running up through the centre of my job. I can also see that I've got a model for the road surface. If I want to rotate in 3D I can select this option on the left hand side and then I can click and drag to rotate my model and see it coming around that sweeping bend and down to towards control point one that you can see here. I'm now going to select the main menu button. A typical requirement after importing all of our data is to enter an additional control point that might not have been included in the original data set now the easiest way to do this is to select the stakeout application and then just select the red toolbox. You can see here the option to create a new point. I'm going to create another control point which I'm going to call control 100. I'm just going to give it easting, northing and elevation of zero for the purpose of this example and this will be a control point so I'm going to select the control attribute here and then select tick and as you can see control point 100 has now been added to the map this concludes the tutorial on setting up a project in icon build software